welcome everyone. Um, so today we have the pleasure to have with us Andre Bernevik from Princeton. So uh, Andre is a is a world leader a leader in uh, in everything which concerns topological properties of electrons and solids, be that insulators, superconductors, whale semi-metals, and uh, his work also is characterized uh, by close attention to experiments. In fact, some many of his uh, theoretical predictions have been uh, confirmed experimentally. And, uh, and uh, recently he's been doing some intriguing work on um, uh, some special uh, quantum scar states in various condensed matter systems, which also have been searched for experimentally. And uh, that's what's he's going to be talking about today. So please, Andre. Uh... Many thanks. So uh, yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, this is the first uh, um, seminar uh, online in uh, Paris. I wish I was in person, but um, such is life. And um, what uh, I'll be talking about today is work that was done in collaboration with my uh, long-term collaborator, Nicolas Ragnon, and um, um, a student who's now a postdoc, Sanjay Mulgalia, and more recently, Frank Schindler. Um, um, I'll be presenting some results, some new results from uh, uh, work that Nicola and Frank Schindler and uh, um, I have done together. And um, some results from the collaboration with um, uh, the second row of people, um, in particular, um, um, Stefan Rachel, uh, uh, Rahul Nakishar, and Paul Fendley. Um, these are the references, um, and let's get into it. So basically, to motivate the talk experimentally, uh, if uh, if needed, um, it turns out that you know while we didn't really know how to uh, study non-equilibrium dynamics in let's say twenty or thirty years ago to the extent that um, of uh, controllability that we do today. Cold atoms basically have solved this problem in the sense that um, they have enabled the study of non-equilibrium dynamics of interacting quantum systems. And of course, um, this brings about realization of phenomena or states of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of um, matter that can only be realized out of equilibrium. For example, one of these is uh, uh, time crystals. And hence, um, there's been a lot of effort on strong theoretical foundations of uh, interacting systems. And this work is, you know, sort of a small, very small piece of that in the sense that it tries to review whether uh, the eigenstate uh, thermalization hypothesis um, in its strong sense is violated or not. And um, this is the um, uh, outline of the talk. I'll basically be presenting a exact or the, the first exact model where the strong ETH violation was observed and uh, then connected to what's later known as, as, as scars. And then I'll be presented a lot of other systems where scars exist. So it turns out that this phenomenon is quite, it's not, of course, it's not um, entirely generic in the sense that it won't appear in any disordered non-translation in Baron Hamiltonian, but it's quite generic for some um, set of Hamiltonians. And I'll make some connections. We still don't know the entire um, theory, but I'll make some connections with, to what we know. So I'll give a quick review of ergodicity, and I'm not an expert in this, but um, the one thing that I'll be focusing on is um, entanglement entropy. And um, basically, um, the property of, of, of uh, um, ergodic systems that I'll be um, um, using is entanglement, entanglement of states in the middle of the spectrum. And these are some properties here of, of, of uh, ergodic systems. But really what I'll be using is um, that the fact that uh, the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis says that in the middle of the spectrum, so in this, in this region of energy where there's a finite uh, density of states of, 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 of levels, where it's uh, basically uh, exponential density of states of levels, then the eigenstates um, uh, are thermal and the, their entanglement entropy obeys a volume law. So you take one of these eigenstates, a generic eigenstate in the middle of the spectrum, and 
the strong ETH hypothesis says that any state you take here, you cut half of the system, you compute uh, the reduced density matrix. Once you compute the reduced density matrix, you can compute the entanglement entropy. And um, this um, obeys a, a volume law, uh, which basically means that you know, any matrix product state representation of this state uh, would have a bond dimension that um, is basically um, um, exponential in the volume of the system that's traced out. Okay, and this is very, very different from the ground states of or highest excited states because the highest excited state is the ground state of minus a Hamiltonian. Um, and the ground states of the system and the low lying states, and by this I refer to, I'm not sure if you can see my cursor, my mouse, but for, for this I refer to the ground state and you know, the ground state like states, which means the low energy excitations, but before, before the middle of the spectrum or before the density of, of, uh, of um, at the level spacing between the states is exponentially small. So before that, before you reach that, just the ground state and state like excitation or the upper, the highest um, state and uh, excitations are around below the highest state. These ones obey an area law. And uh, this is, of course, uh, people in this audience know this is the area law entanglement. Now, the strong ETH says that whatever eigenstate I take here in the middle of the spectrum, they will satisfy ETH, ETH and they'll have the one thing that will 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 be focusing on the one property that will show it's it's um, it's violated in these new states is that their entanglement entropy um, um, would be proportional to the volume if they respect ETH. Now, there's many um, 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 Hamiltonians that were thought to obey ETH and um, only a few examples that were known not to obey ETH. And one of these examples are, of course, integrable systems. And another example is many body localized systems. Many body localized systems can be sort of thought as, this was the work of Abanian, uh, as integrable systems with um, a stable integrability. So in many body localized system, of course, you need disorder. But once you have disorder, you can write um, quasi-local um, um, or local um, constants of motion. And then if you perturb the Hamiltonian a little bit, they still remain um, 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 integrals. You can still write integrals of motion. So that's why we call stable integrability. And these ETH violations, uh, ETH violation was known and thought was to occur only in these two types of systems. So now um, the question we wanted to pose is can the ETH be violated in the absence of an extensive number of conserved quantities so in the absence of an integrable in, integ integral systems and in the absence of disorder. So no many body localization also. So in a purely translational um, invariant system interacting, of course, um, uh, without disorder um, and without um, um, a number of, um, without integrability. And, we solved this question analytically, and um, this was later known uh, by the uh, independent work, kind of these two works um, basically didn't know about each other. This was later given the name of many body scars by Serbian Papin and, uh, Papic, Papic and Abanin and Turner et al. And this um, in, in this paper, uh, and they were coming at this question from, um, trying to uh, model an experiment by, um, by Michel Lukin. And these quantum many body scars, basically, um, the name was given because of uh, similarity with classical systems, trajectories of a billiard ball that are um, um, non-chaotic. So the question is, is there a paradigm of um, ETH breaking beyond integrability and many body localized states? Uh, question. And what are the issues? Yes. Question. Yes, so when yes. you say beyond uh, integrability, how how would you test non-integrability? Ah. Yeah, so so the, so the one so the one way we test it is so of course as you know as you, uh, as you're thinking it's, it might be maybe maybe it's not visible it's not yeah. clear integrability maybe there's something hidden yes. Um, but you know the one thing that's that's uh, that's done in these is large scale uh, level statistics, okay? and there now I, I know there's some issues with 
there's some very special cases in level statistics where you have Vigna Dyson, but it's still, it might still be, I think Shaman was pointing them out to still be inter integral, but these are not those special cases. So they're very simple models that have perfect, even, even on small size numerics, um, I mean, not small size, but, you know, um, 10 so, so by testing the distribution of eigenvalues, the statistics. Exactly. Okay. Exactly, Thanks. exactly. So I'll, and, and then you can do more, yeah, I'll, I'll show you the plots in, in two slides. Thank you. But but in, indeed, um, you know, that's it's that's tested numerically because as you pointed out, it's, you know, there might be, you might be missing um, analytically the integrability, but all these have perfect Wigner Dyson um, distribution. So I'll show you the plots. Thank you very much. Uh, so then there's, so what what can you do to, to, to find a paradigm um, to find a um, ETH breaking, well, the certain issues, um, strong issues arise in the fact that we don't know how to solve for eigenstates in the middle of the spectrum. Obviously, these are very complicated many-body systems. Um, the Hilbert space grows exponentially, um, and you don't have um, control over the eigenstates of spectrum, even for models where you do have control over the over the ground state, for example. So, hence, what most people in the field or almost all the papers in the field of many body localization do um, is basically just very smart conjecture uh, supported by numerical calculations. And these numerical calculations are as big as, as one, can, one, can, one can do. It really just depends on your numerical skills. Uh, um, um, you know, roughly you know, there are 20 sites of the order of that order, roughly. So, and they're mostly 1D because in, one, in 2D, you immediately get swamped by the Hilbert space dimension. So then what I want to claim is that um, um, we found a simple set of states that span from the ground state all the way to the highest excited states. Um, uh, this, the, the kind of pierce through the spectrum of a non-integrable systems, a uh, non-integrable system. And we're able to give um, their expression analytically, and then we're able to calculate the entanglement entropy analytically, and to show that they don't, um, that they, you know, they, it doesn't, that the entanglement entropy does not follow a volume law, even though these states kind of interpolate between the ground state and the highest excited state, uh, not interpolate, but they appear at, at energies that form a tower. And since then, there's been many examples of, of systems um, of systems where this happened. And these are the so-called exact scar states. Um, they should be kind of um, sort of um, distinguished from the, from the um, uh, approximate uh, scar states, uh, which are the ones in the experiment, which, you know, they have a volume component of the entanglement entropy, but it's very small, their volume component. And these ones have no volume component of the entanglement entropy. Okay, so what's the model that we used? Well, the model that you used is the AKLT spin chain. And this is a famous model where you have a um, sum of nearest neighbor projections, which um, for example, cannot have two nearest neighbors cannot be in a spin two state. This is a spin one model and two nearest neighbors cannot be in a spin two state. And um, the Hamiltonian can be written more, uh, more, um, um, familiarly as this, basically as this bi-quadratic uh, Hamiltonian. And this is of course the model where you, um, so there cannot be in a spin two state in the ground state. This can be, um, it's a projector Hamiltonian and this has been used to, pr to prove the Halden gaps by, you know, these, of course, the uh, uh, AKLT um, uh, paper. Um, it's also, this ground state serves the prototype for uh, symmetry protected topological states matrix product state wave function has got a matrix product state ex expression, the ground state with um, a bond dimension two, et cetera. So now, um, how do you find the ground state in the highest excited state? Well, the ground state is actually very simple in the sense that you form, you take every spin one on one side and you basically say that, oh, um, um, I'm going to, um, uh, form the spin one out of two spin one half degrees of freedom symmetrized. And then I'm going to dimerize these spin um, uh, one half degrees of freedom in between sites so that they form a, 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 um, a singlet. And this is the, you know, the, uh, the um, um, pictorial representation of the, 
of, of the singlet is denoted by a line here. And that means that in the ground state, for example, um, um, since these two spin one halves, the right one on this side and the left one on this side, have formed a spin singlet, I'm remain, I remain with two spin one halves, they can only be in spin zero or spin one state, so they cannot be in spin two state. And hence, this the, the, the um, uh, projector um, uh, term on sites n and n plus one, out of which the AKLT Hamiltonian is formed, which basically uh, project onto the spin two gives you zero on this state. Okay, because this state cannot be on spin. Uh, this, this, the state of two spins, one on one on two ADS and size cannot be in spin um, in a spin um, two state. And of course, the highest state is the ferromagnetic state. And this is, um, you know, this, this is the expression because it's, it projects onto spin two. Um, and um, the ground state of this uh, Hamiltonian has energy zero with this, with this, the, I mean, of course you can shift it, but the one that I wrote before, which is the sum of these projectors has energy zero and the ferromagnetic state is the highest excited state. So you can write the ground state exactly. And um, despite this fact, the model is non-integrable. So you can see uh, very um, clear um, uh, GOE um, um, Level repulsion, big Dyson, which is related to the um, um, to the question uh, before, um, that um, you know you can solve even this is I think for um, uh, ten sites or um, um, something like this, and um, um, it satisfies uh, very neatly uh, big Dyson um, um, level repulsion. Now the other projector Hamiltonians that we know. There's many of them. These, these are these are sort of called frustration-free Hamiltonians, where you just have a Hamiltonian being a sum of projectors, each of which annihilates the ground state. Um, uh, these projectors do not commute, so it's not kind of a stabilizer code like the other, like uh, like the exactly solvable Hamiltonians. So they don't commute, so it's not exactly solvable. And there's many examples of these in any dimension really. For example, the Haldane pseudo-potentials are one example for the fractional quantum hole state, the shastri sutherland model, the madruna gosh model, and all of them that I know of are non-integrable of these. And then how do, so then what we said well, was, um, um, let's look at the spectrum of this <coughs> model in finite size. And you look at the spectrum of this model in finite size, and this is for L equals 16 particles, okay? And um, um, this is um, for L, L equals 16 sites. Uh, so it's you know, quite a large system. You've got you know, three to the 16 um, by three to the 16 matrix um, basically cut into um, symmetry sectors. Um, and what you see is that um, you know, you've got a bunch of energies, which you, of course is a huge amount of energies. But then what you observe is you observe some remarkably, um, um, some remarkable energies, which are integers. And this is kind of like the way we, uh, Nicolai and uh, Sanjay and myself initially thought about this. Um, now the Hamiltonian basically has an integer, it's, it's, a, it's an integer matrix. So really, if you're gonna get out of a three, six, by three to the 16 times three to the 16 integer matrix, you're gonna get some integer energies. Uh, those energy really specific polynomial um, is certainly not going to give you, um, uh, you know, uh, integer numbers as roots uh, generically. And, and if you get integer energies basically out of a huge integer matrix, those basically de define some very special Krilov subspaces. And out of these integer energies, I want to point out that, or they're not all integer, but they're some rational. Okay. And you can get this out of high scale scale numerics by doing some, by basically, um, um, you know, converting numbers to, to ratios and then, and then, um, and then, you know, you can clear, you can see within machine precision that there are these numbers. Um, and what I'll be focusing on in this talk are these integer energies denoted here in red, which as you can see, form a ladder. So you can see zero is the ground state, 16 is the highest excited state, but then you've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Question. Uh, and, yes. Uh, so after numerical observations, uh, 
Uh, has anyone proved algebraically or analytically that they are integers, true integers? I mean, yeah, I yeah. I'll, I'll give you the expression in the next slide. Okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Yes. Yeah. So, so yeah. So this is how you basically this is how you hunt for them, right? Because given a model, you're not gonna just by looking at it. It's not entirely. I mean, in retrospect, it's easy to see that these are the excited states, and you'll see them immediately. But it's not. It's not um, given a generic model. It's not. Um, um easy to um to find them and this is how we hunt for them and you know this this procedure has been kind of now used by some people but it hasn't been used to the extent that i had hoped for so even now we find using the same procedure other models that have exact eigenstates and i'll show you in a little bit but yeah this is how you hunt for them so now let me give you the, their expression so their expression is the following let's define the basis state mn, which is a um, S, a spin on site n, raising operator applied twice. So it's a spin two magnon uh, on site n. And this, what it does is it breaks the bonds on site n minus one and n in the ground state, acting on the ground state, based the bonds between site n minus one and n, and between site n and n plus one. And it has to create a ground state of spin zero, it has to create a spin two. So it just polarizes those spins and you can see it here. So now you can immediately see that the beauty of these projector Hamiltonians of these frustration free Hamiltonians that, you know, the only thing that will matter in the scattering problem is what happens around, around this site end where I hit, where I flip the spin twice. And this is because, you know, the projector Hamiltonian will kill everything um, that's that's to the left of site n minus one is to the right of site n plus one. So that one you don't care about. And you find out that the Hamiltonian scatters this uh, MN configuration to bond uh, inversion symmetric configuration. So it scatters them to, um, uh, for example, this configuration plus the left configuration plus the right configuration. Okay. And now you can immediately see that, so you have the scatter, scattering uh, a scattering equation, which is which is uh, um, h times mn is equal to some eigenvalue times mn plus this n n states are the left one and the right one. Okay, but you can see that the left one here. I'm not sure if you see my cursor, but the left one uh, in the second row is is a translation, or the right one is the translation of the left one. Okay, so now if you make a momentum pi um, excitation of this, then this scattering cancels and you're left with an eigenstate, okay? And this is um, uh, an eigenstate at energy two because of this two, spin two, and it happens for all even L. So by the way, these states happen for even um, even L because of this, uh, this, uh, this, um, this issue. So, so, okay, so good, you know, momentum pi, you have to hit, uh, you have to have uh, even L. Um, so this is the um, uh, um, first eigenstate of energy two is minus one to the n s n plus squared on the ground state, which we'll call this an operator p. So you act with p on the ground state, and um, the uh, energy it's is 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 two. Now you know I we thought and a lot of people thought so for a long time that that only momentum pi scars it can exist or you know momentum zero or pi but recently there's been a paper by Anusha Chandran at, and collaborators at Boston which basically found scars are able to kind of reverse engineer scars at every momentum mm -hmm. so um okay so now so now you take this operator p which is again um is this momentum pi spin two magnon you take this operator p and you act it n times on the ground state Okay, and this is the tower of states that we um, had uh, um, found numerically, and you can kind of see that you know if you act it once, it gives you one spin two magnon and momentum pi. If you act it twice, it gives you two spin magnons which scatter a little bit, but only very close to each other um, at total momentum zero. So there are, each of them is a momentum pi, et cetera. And if you act it L over two times, you get, you get to the ferromagnetic state. So these are the exact expressions. So now having the exact expressions, we ask what are the implications for the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis? Well, the implications are immediate because you can, having these exact expressions and having this operator, 
and having this very simple uh, form of these states, you can immediately estimate um, their um, um, entanglement entropy. So what you can do is you can write this S2N as a matrix product state with a small bond dimension. And the bond dimension, so this N here is the number of times you hit, you apply this operator P, okay? And basically you can write this operator P as a matrix product operator, et cetera. But, it's, but the fact that it's a local operator that you apply you know, um, n times, or it's the sum of local operators that you apply n, n times, basically gives you a matrix product state with a small bond dimension. You can you can find exactly the spawn, the uh, an upper an upper um, um, bound on the bond dimension, and this bond dimension is two times n plus one. Okay, and now you can basically um, um, see that the entanglement entropy, because by bond dimension you can you can bound the entanglement entropy, is um, has to be less than log of this, which is two times n plus one, log of two times, so two times n plus one. So it's got log bounded, log of n, where, where n now is the number of times you hit, um, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, um, the ground state with this projector. If I'm in the thermodynamic limit and one state's in the middle of the spectrum, n over L is finite, is constant, is some fraction, n over L. So that means that S is um, bounded by log L. So these are log L uh, states as opposed to uh, S uh, being volume law as predicted by TH. So these states analytically violate the eigenstate normalization hypothesis. You can see them in a spectrum where you, com where you compute the entanglement entropy of all the states in every, of all the states of, for example, this is 16 site, um, AKLT model. So the entanglement spectrum of all the states has this kind of nice semicircle law, but then you have these states, these cars, these X's, which have much lower entanglement entropy. They kind of, they kind of, you know, they, 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 uh, they, they're, they're much, much lower than, than um, the ones that satisfy the ETH. So all of these states that sit on this, on this um, um, semicircle um, is, are, I mean, semicircle is parabola. Um, some some curve is not is are are not uh, are um, volume law, and then you get these scars which are um, 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 area law, um, which are log L um, uh, entanglement entropy. Okay, so if there's questions now, I'll take some questions. If not, I'll go to the connection between these and the matrix product states and try to get to the spectrum generating algebras um, uh, that describe these states. Okay. Uh, then... Maybe I can ask a question. Yes. I mean, if nobody else has to, but uh, it's uh, just too similar uh, to the coordinate beta ansatz to me. Mm -hmm. So, how, how do you explain this? Or, or maybe is there a connection? Maybe like the sub part subsystem is actually integral or like? Actually, yeah, um, a related question. Maybe, I, I could, maybe we could. So, so, yeah. so on the landscape of spin one spin chains, uh, there, there is an integral system, right? There is a way to write the Hamiltonian using gamma functions probably, which will be integrable. Um, which will be solvable right. by beta ansatz. Is, 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 is right. So how far is AKLT model from that integrable point? Yeah, so I'll, so I'll answer both of these questions in the matrix product state because I'll construct the pathway to integrability. So, so there's a very good, I mean, it's quite, the model, the AKLT model by itself is quite far from integrable. You can see it from the Wigner Dyson level statistics, but there is a path and this is an outstanding question whether whether these cars are remnants of what was you know like a one of the beta anza states which remains so the answer is probably yes you know but they're remnants very far away from integrability so 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 i'll answer both of these questions right now you can you just preempted basically my next five slides thank you so so um so yeah, so if I can take uh, 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 10 minutes to basically, or five minutes to, uh, to uh, uh, point out this matrix product state connection, then construct a pathway to integrability. So basically the ground state AKLT is a matrix, can be written as a matrix product state. And this matrix, these A matrices are two by two matrices. 
And then you can create quasi particles and momentum K kind of excited states on top of this um, by this operator. Um, you act with some operator on side J and, and this is the simplest quasi particle that you can create. And, and you put a momentum K and this basically um, um, acting with this operator basically modifies the MPS of this A matrix. In the AKLT case, it's translation invariant. So it, all the A's are the same. It modifies the A matrix by basically putting a matrix product operator on them. And, and you create this new B matrix, uh, which is this operator O on the MPS matrix. Okay. So now the question is, how do you construct a Hamilton? How do you, you know, backtrack to find B from a given A? Okay. And the reason is if I if if we manage to find this, we can have a pathway so you can tune the A matrices, the MPS matrices, to find a pathway between the AKLT and an integrable model. And then if you find an, a, a prescription to find an, a, a tower of quasi particles kind of scars in this matrix product state prescription, you can kind of follow it all the way to integrability. Okay, and I won't bore you with the details, but this is very similar to how you construct um, 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 exact uh, uh, Hamiltonians from MPS ground state. So it turns out that if you have a ground state or eigenstate, which has an MPS um, um, description with a bond dimension that's finite or that doesn't grow, that doesn't grow as the volume. So let's take it to bond dimension that's that's finite. Then you can find a frustration-free Hamiltonian that that um, that. Um, 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 has this as a ground state. And the prescription is, sim is simpler. This is a simpler um, um, way of doing it than it was first done by Verstrasse and Sirac and other people. Um, um, I think there were two or three groups that did it at the same time. Uh, but basically um, what you do is you wanna find an operator H that annihilates some parts of this matrix con con contraction. And then given that you have that you have a finite bond dimension, all you need to do is count how many, how many times the Hilbert space on site, uh, uh, how, how fast it grows. And once it grows, once it's become larger than, than the span of the bond dimension matrices, then you can write the Hamiltonian. So for example, for the AKLT, these matrices are two by two, okay? And then, and then the image of the, of the uh, um, 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 so since they're two by two, I can't write a one body Hamiltonian because a one body Hamiltonian, the physical dimension would be three. So three is less than two. But if I have two sites, now the physical dimension is nine. Whereas, whereas, um, um, whereas actually the bond dimension is, I have two here and two here, so it's four. So I can project into the complement of, uh, of, of, of the uh, image of this image of the two side MPS and this projection Hamiltonian will basically annihilate um, 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 the will annihilate the ground the this uh, ground state if this projector here ZJ matrix is positive semi definite. It's a very easy construction that you can build. It actually and we you can generalize it to excited states. So this is some sort of you know MPS generalization to excited states. This B operator is the operator of the of the excited state, so it's the this operator O on the matrix A, okay, and you can find out the conditions if, for which for which this excited state is now the ground state of the Hamiltonian that um, um, that um, 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 annihilated the um, wave function with matrix products uh, state A, okay. So and, uh, Bogdan, can I ask a question? So are you saying that for these parent Hamiltonians, you can construct quasi particles eigenstates analytically? So, so I, so, so there's, there's yeah, so there's several, so I'm saying there's, there's, you can find the conditions and then you have to solve the conditions. So, so given, so given a matrix product state A, if the matrix product state A has a finite bond dimension, then you, then you can find the projector Hamiltonian, you just you basically just count how many time how many sites you have to to yeah. to uh, to get to so that the Hilbert space of those sites is larger than the uh, bond dimension squared, for example. Yeah. Here and then you project into that, and then you found you found you found Hamiltonian that annihilates 
um, that state, so you can find the Hamiltonian. That's, these are these are this is the frustration. Well, that's, that's simple. But now you're in the second slide. You were saying how you can that's find right. the quasi particle right. Yes, yeah, so and now there's a more complicated condition, and the condition yeah. is the following. The condition the condition is 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 this one. You have this 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 one here. So now you have to solve it, and you have to find out if this if this exists or not. So so it's not so it's not immediate that it will exist for all the frustration free Hamiltonians even. But, but, but if it doesn't but, exist, where's the mistake? So we know that the quasi particle, for example, let's take ATLT. As far as I, I thought that for ATLT, quasi particle excitations are not exactly solvable. So something is, well, but the Hamiltonian is of this parent Hamiltonian form. Ah, right, right, right. This, this is not, this is, okay. So first of all, this quasi particle, so, this I'm claiming that here you can find this you can find a solution that solves for this tower of states, not for every quasi particle, right? So this is so for example, you can immediately see that this is a very simple solution. It just takes an operator. This the 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 ansatz for this solution is an operator, local operator on site J times a momentum, right? This is not the most generic form of all, right? I could have operators that act on two sites. Right, with some scattering between them. See, so, so this this is how. So we try to kind of backtrack from. So we know the form of these tower of states in the AKLT, and we try to backtrack from there. To okay, find so you're saying this ansatz would not be sufficient, say, to describe the the first quasi particle, but it might be sufficient for some states in the middle of the spectrum. So you're saying that's right. Okay. It, well, it's certainly sufficient for this tower of states that I that at integer energies that I that I uh, that I. Uh, that I showed. So, so this okay. is, so yeah. So it will certainly won't describe all the all all the um, um, well. It will certainly won't describe most of the states, right? It will, it will just describe these 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 ones that are uh, local operator times the momentum, and then and then you want to apply this operator n times. Okay. So so for example, okay. right. So so so. Um, so you find these conditions and then you know the matrix A and you can kind of do a numerical search in this the matrix A is two by two. You can kind of do a numerical search in the space of operator satisfying this condition for both the momentum and the operator. And um, um, the AKLT reproduces, uh, you, you find the AKLT tower of states. But what's more interesting here and this is coming to your question is that, so for example, this the way it works for the AKLT is you have this AKLT matrices. This is A for spin um, one for spin zero for spin minus. Then you find the subspaces that uh, I was talking about that are spanned by um, by the um, by the uh, um, uh, bond MPS, and you find three subspaces. This is the subspace of of um, of um, if you project into the complement of this of A, you find the ground state. But if you project in the complement of so this is the b is the quasi particle space because we chose the operator to be s s s plus squared so it's spent by s plus squared um, um, on 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 the ground state and this is another complement space which is the complement space of a minus b and then you find the most general nearest neighbor hamiltonian that has this so the tower of states that was it's the the exact eigenstates that i presented is a tower of states not only for the AKLT but for this more general Hamiltonian. Okay, so for example, this more general Hamiltonian um, um, would be AKLT if this, I guess, if these ZJs and if these if uh, epsilon was two and if these ZJs were one, for example. So this is kind of a more uh, generic Hamiltonian that has the exact same tower of scars. So now going to answer the question uh, that was posed before. Um, you can start, you can change these matrices, right? You don't need to start from the AKLT, uh, from the AKLT matrices, which are these ones. You can change these MPS matrices and you can change them to be, for example, these constants, C plus, C zero, C minus, okay? And you can tune these Cs around, okay? And you can ask, when is this operator P, which is the momentum uh, uh, pi, spin two magnon, um, when are P to the N times the ground state, uh, exact states of a Hamiltonian that also has this as the ground state, okay? And you can find 
from this by tuning the C plus and C minus, you can find a continuous family of spin one Hamiltonians, which have this states times the ground state. Now notice that as I change C plus, C zero and C minus, the ground state changes, but the scars are just P to the n powers times the ground state. Whatever the ground state changes, the scars will change, but they're still p to the n times the ground state. And then there's a continuous family of spin one scarred Hamiltonians connecting the AKLT uh, point to the integrable pure biquadratic point. Okay. And then this raising operator becomes a symmetry at the integrable point. It's not a symmetry, it doesn't commute with the Hamiltonian away from the integrable point. It's even though you know applying it on the ground state gives you. Uh, exact excitations. Um, that doesn't mean commute to the Hamiltonian. I'll tell you in like the next five minutes will be the last time I talk what it actually means. It's a restricted spectrum generating algebra. But at the at the integral point, this operator does transform into the one of one of the symmetries of of the pure biquadratic um, uh, chain. So I think that this this um, answers the, the 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 two questions that were. They were posed. Um, they were posed before. So you know, even though the ground state changes over this interpolation, so this you know, you find interpolation with a, with an with an with an angle. The ground state changes over this interpolation. The p to the n times the ground state are still exact eigenstates, and they're eigenstates that interpolate between the ground state and the highest excited states. And as I go to the integrable point, this operator p that was used to create the states becomes asymmetric. Okay, and there's more involved scars. You can do scars in the perturbed uh, POTS model that involve more, more. You can sort of generalize, this is related to uh, Slava's question. You can generalize this, this construction to uh, more complicated operators. You can't get all the excited states, but in the case that when there are scars, it works for more complicated operators. For example, for the perturbed POTS model, you find this operator that creates scar states. Okay, so, now I want to basically, for the last part of, for the last uh, five minutes or three minutes of the talk, I want to basically um, um, sort of try to give a more uh, algebraic description of these of of these um, uh, of these cars, and we do this by looking at the Hubble model in any dimension, really. So the Hubble model, or you know, the translational symmetry, it's on it's. This is a graph, for example. Um, um, but let's, for right now, consider translational symmetry. So the Hubbard model is nearest neighbor hopping plus Hubbard U. And it was known very, since you know, early work by uh, Cien Yang that, it, that this model, besides having you know, SC2 symmetry, spin symmetry, also has an eta pairing symmetry, which is a pseudo spin symmetry. And it's a, it's, it's an operator that doesn't commute with the Hamiltonian, but it commutes up to itself. Okay, and this is kind of the spectrum the spectrum generating algebra. It's a very powerful. Right? I'm not. I'm sure this audience knows very well. It's a very powerful construction in the sense that once you found the state of the Hamiltonian, you can hit it with Ada dagger and and find a number of times and find eigenstates at equally spaced. Um, energies. Now, this of course reminds you of scars, except that in this case, eta is an exact symmetry. Okay, and um, it's an it actually gives you another SU two symmetry. And um, you know, of course, um, as I said, uh, at some. Uh, spacing starting from any any state. Now we know that the AKLT model or the models that I presented before do not have this symmetry because their spectrum does not come. You can find only one tower of states. Even you know if it had this symmetry, the spectrum for any state that you that you start with from any, for any eigenstate, you could find this tower of states. So this, you'd find many towers, but you know you find only one. Okay. So so the of course the difference is that. In the Hubbard model, eta is a uh, symmetry, whereas in the AKLT, this p operator that I used to that we used to define the states is not a symmetry. So what is it? Okay. Well, it turns out that it's not a spectrum generating algebra, but it's a um, a um, restricted what we call a restricted spectrum generating algebra, which means the following thing. Um, 
it basically means that you have spectrum generating algebra property, but only when acting on one, on one state. So for example, you focus on some uh, tower of eigenstates um, and you ask which is this operator eta or p in the AKLT state to some power n acting on some, on some state, be the ground state or another state. And you can prove that the tower of eigenstates exists when the following things happen. Psi zero is an eigenstate of the Hamiltonian. The commutator of H and eta gives you epsilon, some energy times eta, um, but only when acting on this psi zero. And this is the case of the EKLT state. And, and the second commutator of eta vanishes. So you can see this is kind of like, it's kind of like, right, kind of like a symmetry, but a symmetry that's cut when in, in, in the expansion of commutator, right? So if I tried to transform a Hamiltonian by a symmetry, I would have, you know, a lot of commutators, but at some point this commutator cuts, okay? And this we call the spectrum, restricted spectrum generating algebra of order one. And I'll show you why. And you can actually modify the Hubbard model by adding extra terms to the Hubbard model so that this eta pairing is not a symmetry anymore, but you can still find the tower of, of, uh, of exact states. And for example, one of the interactions that you can put on is um, um, nearest neighbor spin-spin interaction, which would kill the eta pairing as a symmetry, but would remain uh, what would still have scar states because all these conditions would be satisfied, okay? And you can generalize this, of course. So, so generalize schematically, it. what does the commutator of H and eta dagger looks like? It's so you're saying it should be something which commutes with eta dagger. So it's it looks like what like schematically? It's ah, not zero. Uh, it's not just a, 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 a epsilon eta zero. So it looks like what a bunch of other eta zero eta yeah. That's a good question. So so I didn't think about exactly how. H, H eta dagger is not eta dagger because if it was, you'd have yeah, a spectrum yeah, it's generator. Not a dagger. It's eta dagger plus some extra terms. Exactly. It's eta dagger plus something that commutes with uh, plus something that commutes with eta dagger, right? So um, um, yeah, so it's a good question. I don't I don't uh, know a priori the answer to that. Uh, but there are, are there yeah. many things which commute with eta dagger which could appear in, in that side. For example, for this simple model that you present here by adding the spin spin interaction, probably you know what in this case the commutator is. It's, it's... Yeah, no, I know this. Well, it would it would be easy to write it down. I don't know it by heart what the commutator is, but it's 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 easy to write it down. Um, yeah, let me, yeah, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. I, that's, a, that's a very good question. Um, yeah, that's a very good question. Well, okay, anyway, okay. it's clear to me that it's a, it's a more general condition. So. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, you can generalize this condition to, to the following condition, um, which is, which is um, you know, you act, you act with, uh, you have a, you have a psi zero state, which is, which is an eigenstate of the Hamiltonian. You have a commutator with eta, which is um, which um, gives you a spectrum generating algebra, but only when acting on psi zero. Then the commutator n times, small n times of eta with h is zero only when you acted on the on the on the state psi zero. But then from n plus one, it's 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 um, it's non-zero. It's it's zero for any state that you act on. So I don't put a state here. And for example, the AKLT, the AKLT state has, um, so this is, this is called the restricted spectrum generator algebra of order M. And the AKLT state is when M uh, is equal to two in this case. So only when I, when I do the commutator three times, does it um, kill the, um, the uh, it's, it's, it's commuting with the Hamiltonian in the AKLT case. Okay. So, uh, there's many scars in other things such as non-linear Lussinger liquid, but uh, I will basically stop here because I've taken uh, take enough of your time with this. But the main message of this is that the scars are, I think, generic at least in these simple Hamiltonians that um, we look at. Um, certainly, they exist in the Hubbard model. They exist, you know, in in 
in, in many other models, they exist in this projector frustration free models and the relationship with integrability is not, not, not yet known. So that's, um, that's um, what I wanted to uh, say. Thank you. Thanks, Andre. Thank you. Are there any questions, including from guests from outside the YHS? I actually have a question, Sandra. So this, you know, of course, I'm not an expert, but I know I heard about this parent Hamiltonians and like a KLT and so on. And uh, I know that uh, I mean, people usually say that for many aspects for understanding uh, the properties of um, the ground state and maybe the first excited states, these parent Hamiltonians are as good as more realistic. Hamiltonians, which don't have this property of being made of projectors all annihilating the ground state. Uh, but usually they say that, okay, well, for, for the excited states, it's clear not the case. These guys are very different. And in the sense, your work is showing, is giving some very dramatic example of how these Hamiltonians made of pieces annihilating the ground states are uh, different for the excited spectrum. Right. But in your um, in your abstract, you're mentioning that these scar states were actually observed in experiments. So how is this possible that in experiments that they were able to reproduce this very special uh, Hamiltonians? How did this work out for them? Yes, they reproduce, they didn't reproduce, they're not exact scars in, in the, uh, they're, they're these things called the PXP models. So they're not they're not actually um, 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 exact scars. They're um, um, basically um, they're basically Hamiltonians that where you where you have um, they're kind of I don't know if you know this Fendley types uh, Hamiltonians where you have a uh, say a sigma x and some sigma z operators on on um, on the um, um, adsn sites. So basically, this is kind of like this is projector one minus sigma z on site uh, one sigma x on site uh, two and one minus sigma z on site on site three. So these things they can they can they can kind of get them in these Rydberg atom experiments where okay so so basically where you um, um, where you kind of tune to some um, um, resonance between between uh, uh, two different levels and kind of forbid forbid some some spin flips uh, depending on whether the spins here or here are up or down so so these are so these are basically uh, these Rydberg atom experiments I don't know exactly how they uh, you know they, the, the details but they, they're basically they basically realize this pxp model now in this pxp model what you can show so this this is you know this is the model Mm -hmm. um, uh, where this this p is the you know one minus uh, sigma z, for example, and and they don't commute between themselves. The sum of operators don't commute. Now this model you don't know the exact ground state, um, but what you do know, um, and and the scars are not exact. But what you um, what you do know is that you can find some you know almost exact expression of the scars. They don't they. Still scatter, scatter very um, weakly, and this is what uh, uh, Serbin, Papic, and Abanin did. And um, these ones have a volume law entanglement part, but it's very small. So normally the ETH would predict there. There's you know basically some some um, 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 coefficient to the um, volume law of the entanglement entropy. And these ones, because they're not exact scars, they have that, but it's much smaller than the ETH would uh, would uh, um, would would predict. And you know, if you really, if you want to, um, if you want to think of these models, they're actually they're actually just some um, version of pair hopping models, actually. So this type of model where I have where I have so this is a, this is a simple model that, for example, you also don't know the ground state. Um, where you take two particles on site one and two, and then hop them on sites 
um, um, zero and three. Okay, so this is the process, the pair hopping. And these appear in like, you know, you can realize them, for example, in strong, in strong electric fields. Like uh, this is with, with interactions in a strong electric field, you realize exactly this Hamiltonian plus some, some, plus some electrostatic um, um, terms, or you can realize in quantum hall on the thin torus plus some electrostatic uh, um, uh, terms. Okay, and this model in, in some, so this model is actually very special because, because it's Hilbert space breaks up into Krylov subspaces that are, that are not um, um, generic in the sense that, you know, a Krylov subspace, if I start with a state, with a random state and hit the Hamiltonian many times, hit the state with Hamilton many times, I'll go into and cover the whole Hilbert space. For this Krylov subspace, I start with a special, with a product state, I hit, I hit it with the Hamiltonian and the Hilbert space does not cover the whole, the, the, the Hilbert space such formed by hitting the Hamiltonian does not spend the full Hilbert space. So if you do this, you'll find out that these Hamiltonians have, you know, what's called, um, have, now there's a fancy name for this in this in quantum by dynamics is called Hilbert space fra fragmentation, but it's really just cool off subspaces that are not, that don't spend the full, the full uh, Hilbert space. So what you find out is that this, this pair hopping Hamiltonian some integrable has some integrable subspaces has some finite dimensional subspaces and has some non-integrable spaces. And this PXP Hamiltonian, this Hamiltonian for the Rydberg atoms belongs to one of these non-integrable um, uh, subspaces. And here you don't, you know, there's nothing exact here in these things. There's only approximate. You can only approximately argue that they're scars and you can only find them numerically. So it's not, so it's not a, you know, but, but, so yeah, no, so they're not. So my point is, cars are not. Uh, and this was, you know, Aban and, and Papic and Serbin Turner that showed this are not particularized to like these exact models. They exist even in models where you can't find the exact ground state, uh, when you can't find almost anything exactly. Uh, but you still see some 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 scar states, uh, and you can see them numerically, like what they. It is, you know, you can see them numerically here. So you can see, you know, this, these are the entanglement entropy with the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven are the scar states, very low entanglement entropy. Now they're not exact. So they have a small volume component, but it's much smaller than it should be. It's much smaller than it should be based on, um, based on ETH. So my point is that, you know, an experiment can create something that's close to, um, you know, you don't need these fine-tuned models to get scars. Mm -hmm. Is my point, or to get to get the same phenomenon. Of course, you know, as I said, they're not exact scars, but but you know, an experiment over some time scale it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So they they see what they see is they prepare a state, a special a special state, and then they evolve it, and they see revivals of this state, which basically tells you that this state has a large component on some. Thing that's almost a, 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 an eigenstate of the system. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Any other questions? People are not leaving, so presumably somebody has. Yeah, I, I have a question. So um, let's. One, whenever you hear the the ETH uh, hypothesis, you. Normally, you hear that you take a generic state from the middle of the spectrum, and you have certain properties. And the, to me, not, not 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 being an expert, the, the the word generic encodes maybe some complicated tests that you should take. So, in what sense do these uh, scar states fail some of these tests, or or is it just that you can't compute their energy? Is, is this the main reason why then everything fails, or? Yeah, I mean, so basically, so the, 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 so the main thing that you can do is you can, you know, prove that their entanglement entropy is not volume law, right? So that's one thing, but there's many other things that you can prove. So you can, for example, prove that the matrix elements of these states to ADS and states, okay, are, um, of local operators are, are, are zero, you know? So, so these, these states are basically don't, don't, basically kind of, kind of don't mix with states, even though the other states are, right, exponentially close.
they sit in a background of you know, that's exponentially close to them, right? So this they sit, um, they're they're like right. There's states here. There's there's an exponential. This system has a finite bandwidth. There's an exponential number of states here. So there, there's going to be some states very very close to this to to these scar states, but they still won't mix, even though they're exponentially close. So they still won't mix with these uh, states by local uh, um, operators. So that's so that's kind of. Um, one way that um, that um, that you know they 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 don't they don't um, uh, satisfy um, satisfy ETH um, and but the main thing that you can compute here so that's that's a hard thing to compute the matrix elements because you don't know the you don't know an expression of the of these other states but the one thing you can compute is the, the, the their entanglement properties which are completely different. Right. So basically, so basically, the volume, the volume law would tell you that that if I cut a state in half in the middle of the spectrum, I have connections between every volume on this side, every part of, on this uh, uh, side, and the one across and, and 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 across the cut, right? Whereas whereas these states have um, have um, log L, right? So they so they look kind of like um, gapless ground states. Right, this log L. So maybe I can rephrase a bit. Um, so even before you found these states, let, let's say you take some uh, spin chain Hamiltonian, you diagonalize it numerically, maybe for finite size, you compute the <clears throat> entanglement entropy, and you will certainly find some uh, non generic states that will have low entanglement entropy. Uh, not, in the middle, not in the middle of the spectrum. You shouldn't. This well, you could have done this before finding the scar states in the, in this model, for example. Ah, right, right. right? Uh, and, and, and you can imagine in some other model you could you could find the same. Uh, if, if if you find the same, then you probably found scars. But so you're saying that you should this the only okay the only way to to break ETH for now is scars. So you should be looking at scars and maybe trying to prove this other property you just mentioned. Yeah, the only way to break ETH if you don't have many body uh, localization or integrability is this way. That's okay. that's the statement. Right? So if I so yeah, so you're certainly right. If I can, you can compute, and this is what you know. These the, um, for for non-exact scars, this is what what um, what people do, right? So they so like uh, so this is a plot from the original paper. Of, uh, of uh, the PXP model, where it's the non-exact scars, and you know they computed the entanglement entropy, and they saw this low lying. Right, all most states are here. There's a huge amount of states here at large entanglement entropy volume law, but there's tons of them. There's this low set of scar states. So that's that's how they basically found. So so if you find some of some low ones like that look like this, those are those are scars. And they might not be exact scars, like in this in this PXP model. This is the um, Papic, uh, Serbin, Abanian plot. In this PXP model, they're not exact, but that's you know that's how they found them. Um, so yeah, so that yeah, that's that's exactly what you pointed out. Okay. You, can, you. you can just consider it, and if you find it low, then you find scars. Thanks. We have some younger people, students, and so maybe they have some questions. So they should shouldn't be afraid to speak up. Let, let, let me ask something because probably I didn't fully get the talks. So what are the stars in the continuum limit? What are what? What are these stars in the continuum limit? Yeah, so they're they're basically spin two momentum pi. Magnons. That's the that's that's the first state. In the, I mean, right. So so let's not let's let's not talk about uh, lattice. But there, you know, you can still build a spin. Okay. So the the, the it's it's a it's a spin two momentum pi magnon. Okay. Mm -hmm. This state yeah. this state in this state in particular is a low lying state. Okay. Because it has, only has energy two, not energy. Yeah, right. Right, so this so the bandwidth is of the model is um, order L, okay, the bandwidth of the model. This L grows in the continuum limit. It's um, L is the number of sites, okay, um, 
and this is the load of state, but then all the all the other states, you just take this spin two magnon and momentum pi and you hit the ground state with it, right? So it's some it's some combination of spin two magnons with some scattering between them. Okay, so for example, this one schematically looks like this. You create two spin magnons. When they're far away from each other, they don't interact. They interact when they're close to um, close to each other. Okay, so this so each of these p operators contains a spin pi magnon. In real space, you kind of act one and then you act the other one. There's going to be, you know, they're going to act differently on the in the real space. So when they're far away, they don't interact. When they're close together, they interact. Now, as you get to p to the um, n, where n is a fraction of l, those are in the middle of the spectrum. When n is a fraction of l, then you get a lot of them, right? So their interaction is not particularly easy to to um, um, to express. Like this in 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 real space when there's a thermodynamic limit uh, thermodynamic number of them, but you can express in matrix product state uh, form. But um, but yeah, so this is um, you know this is their 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 expression in the momentum space. You just in the in the sorry in the in the in the real space in the continuum you just spin two spin two momentum pi magnons on top of each other. Like, yeah. and I propose and that that we thank Andre uh, and uh, and then people who have more questions like myself can stay for a little longer so that we can say if there are some people who want to leave they should uh, they shouldn't be <laughs> okay so thanks Andre again for thank you great talk thank you thanks thank so much. You.